What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Pokey Office. My name is Colin. What are your goals for Pokemon in 2024? That's what we're going to be talking about today. I have my own goals to share with you. We're going to talk about goals in general, setting some goals, and like I just want to know what your goals are for Pokemon collecting and investing in 2024. Before we get into that, though, I've been announcing this giveaway for a couple weeks for the Ultra Premium Collection of Scarlet and Violet 151. Lucky winner is ny fan cam zero one congratulations see down below in the description to uh, you gotta send me an email with all your information and i'll get that sent out to you asap congratulations that's pretty epic um so goals for 2024 first thing i want to talk about you've probably heard it before but when we're setting goals you got to be specific measurable you probably heard the smart acronym the ones that i really care about personally being specific being measurable and being a little bit timely so uh, specific, like what do you actually want? Like, are you collecting master sets? Do you want to complete the Crown Zenith master set? Or do you want to complete the 151 master set? Or are you collecting sealed booster boxes? Like, do you want one of each one? Or you got to be specific, measurable. Like you have to be able to like, did I achieve this or did I not? So that's kind of similar thing. And then timely, like set a time limit on it. Because if I just say, hey, I want to hit uh, 100,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Like, well, when? By 20, 2000 never? Or is it by like 2025? Or what is it? Like you got to be able to measure. It's all They all work together. Specific, measurable, timely. Um, the other thing that I want to talk to you about goals, I mean, you've probably all heard this before, but personally, I like to set kind of outrageous goals because number one, I heard this saying once that really just made sense to me an analogy. If you're on a sailboat and you don't have a heading, you're probably just going to crash into some sort of Island at some point because you have no idea where you're going. But if you know where you're going, then you can actually like give yourself a direction and start heading in that direction. Like that's your actually goals are like leading your charge to where you want to go. So that made a ton of sense to me. So what I'm saying is in Pokemon, where do we want to go? Like, how am I going to do that? And why doing that, giving yourself a direction? Well, now every decision that you're going to make is going to have that in the back of your mind. And is that going to lead me further to my goal, further in my direction? Or is that going to lead me off course and take myself away from the direction I'm going? So with that analogy in mind, like let's pretend that you're trying to complete a Scarlet and Violet 151 master set. I mean, if you have this opportunity to buy the Iron Valiant special illustration right from Paradox Rift, uh, or you have the opportunity to buy the Blastoise Ultra Rare from Scarlet and Violet 151, and you can't afford both, so you got to pick and choose. Well, if you pick the Iron Valiant from Paradox Rift, that's really not that's leading you away from your goal of achieving the SV 151 Master Set. But if the Blastoise Ultra Rare card is one of the ones that you need to complete your set, well, that's leading you further along the line. So, like that, having that direction in the back of your head actually allows you to make the correct decision. Same with like the financial goals. So I want to continue growing my YouTube channel and we're going to talk about my goals moving forward. But well, do I need to invest in a team up booster box right now? Or do I need to invest in more stock to continue on with my live streams? If my whole goal is to create a bigger YouTube channel, a bigger, better community, uh, and a more like more fun, I guess, <laughs> in in the live streams, well, then maybe buying that team up booster box isn't the right thing for me to do right now. It's better for me to continue down the path of growing my YouTube channel through live streams and through like opening packs for people. So I need to have that stock available. So maybe I need to buy more Scarlet and Violet 151 or more Paradox Rift. So all those to say, like having that direction is really really important so that you can make the right decisions to achieve your goal. The next thing I wanted to talk about is if your goal ha kind of has the financial aspect to it, and I got to put a disclaimer out there. It's not financial advice. This is just me talking and you're listening, I guess. <laughs> but if you have more of like a financial goal in Pokemon, well, then let's think about that. Right now, there could be some really good opportunities to invest in Pokemon. So I just watched a Pokeyaz video about uh, the history repeats itself. Pretty cool video. 
And back in 2020, I think he was talking about, he was buying up a, a little bit of Sun and Moon booster boxes. So like Burning Shadows, Unified Minds, Unbroken Bonds, and Cosmic Eclipse, which were already well above the market price. So right now, we're right in that similar type of spot where we're a third of the way through Scarlet and Violet era. We can still buy some Sword and Shield era booster boxes for relatively cheaply. So if your goal is to invest $2,000 this year into Pokemon and see a gain of 25% by December 31st, 2024. I'm just making this up on the spot. But we got to make those correct decisions. So we have our direction from our goal. Now we need to look at the marketplace and actually see like, well, am I going to buy a Scarlet and Violet base set booster box? Because I expect that. Well, looking at history, I don't think that's going to be a very good place to put your money. Whereas we can buy a couple Chilling Rain booster boxes or Fusion Strike, which are already two years old. And now, hmm, that's like, that's on the cusp of like starting to increase. Chilling Rain is sold out on Pokemon Center now. So like we're starting to see the fruits of that like two to three year old. You're getting, you're almost getting like a two to three year head start. We've talked about that before. So like it's important to actually assess the market price. So you set your goal and then you assess what's going on. So same thing if you're making a uh, master set collection, it's like, hmm, if money is tight or if I only have this much budget, maybe we should put that Scarlet and Violet 151 master collection on hold for a little bit, wait for a few reprints because history repeats itself per usual. And now we're seeing, we're obviously going to see a Scarlet and Violet 151 reprint. Like that's just, I don't actually have that real information, but based on Every other specialty set, Scarlet and One Violet 151 is going to get reprinted, which probably means the prices are going to come down. So maybe we put that master set on hold for a little bit, wait for that reprint to happen. The prices might start coming down. Now we can buy more cards for that same budget, which would be pretty cool. So like we're just setting goal, assessing the market, and then making the right decision that's going to lead us down the direction. So hopefully this is making sense. Let me know what you think. I want to uh, hear what your goals are. So it'd be awesome if you left me a comment. Uh, now switching gears, I want to tell you about my goals because I've been promising that for a little bit uh, to the community. Um, I want to just put it out there so that you guys can keep me accountable. I want to just like bust my butt trying to make this happen. And like I said, right off the bat, I like to set outrageous goals because even if I don't achieve them, it feels better to me to have the drive to like keep chasing that goal that's far off rather than setting like an easier goal, achieving it, and then being like, well, what's there to achieve anymore? I like that like kind of out of reach almost because it just like I need to keep working harder for it. So that's my personal take on it. So some of these are going to be a little bit outrageous. I only have a couple of them uh, and one of them is a dream like I've already kind of mentioned, but number one. So I want to, I'm going to card party 2.0 in June. It starts on June 14th. So my first goal is to have 20,000 subscribers by June 14th, 2024, which is crazy. Uh, I'm like this, th it's been a great start to the year, but to me that just seems absolutely outrageous, but that just almost sets the fire like deep down within me to like, just keep going. So, I mean, here's my shameless plug. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Um, appreciate you all so much. Like it's unbelievable how much this channel has grown already through my first like year and a little bit. And I just want to keep on rocking. I want to come, I want to keep providing you great content. So hopefully you enjoy it. And if you don't, well, that's fine too. Um, but yeah, so goal number one, have 20,000 subscribers by the time I land in Orlando on June 14th, 2024. That's pretty epic. Number two is to have 100 members in part of my YouTube membership. Uh, so if you don't know about the membership, you get access to the discount code most notably for the live streams that happen every couple weeks. And uh, then you get like, I definitely reply to your comments and we hang out and there's members only videos as well. You get the little badge beside your name. Plus it just supports the channel. So another shameless plug and then I'll be done. But if you want to help me achieve my goals, 
Um, I'm just going to keep trying to provide you as much awesome content as possible. So you could consider joining the membership link is down below the description. If you're on a computer, I think you can just click the join button after you subscribed. Uh, iPhone, I think is a little bit funny and it doesn't let you because YouTube wants to make all the money, not pay some of it to the Apple app store, I think is what's going on. Anyways, that's just side rant. Okay. And number three, I actually have four. So number three. This year, I want to have in my collection by December 31st, one out of each of the top Sword and Shield cards, alt art cards, as a PSA 10. So that means we got the Umbreon VMAX, which I already have. The Rayquaza VMAX uh, from Evolving Skies, I don't have that one. Then the Giratina V, I just sent mine back to PSA, hoping for a 10, but not sure because it got an 8 last time. So we'll see how that goes. Then uh, the next ones are a little bit in the air, but definitely the Lugia V from Silver Tempest, which is a uh, also at PSA in one of my upcoming returns. And then the Gengar V Max from Fusion Strike, I have that one as a PSA 10. And then the rest are like those are the ones that I'm really really concerned about. Uh, I would also love to have the two Charizards from Champions Path. Don't have either one of those yet. And then moving forward. My goal for the Scarlet and Violet era, uh, so I didn't really know how to set a time frame for this one, but is to have the top card of every set as a PSA 10. So like Scarlet and Violet base set is Miriam, which I have. Paldia Evolved is Iona, which I have. Um, Obsidian Flames is the Charizard Special Illustration Rare. Don't have that one. 151 is the Charizard. That one, I have a couple of them sent into PSA right now. And then Paradox Rift is the Roaring Moon so far. Don't have that one. Uh, another like small goal is to pull that stinking card because I haven't been able to yet. Anyways, that's that. And then here's the Dreamer goal. And I don't really know how to put a timeline on this or like it's more a dream than a goal, but I thought I'd share it anyways. The big time like collection goal for me in Pokemon is to have one of every single booster box that Pokemon has ever created all the way back to base set. Um, that's a lofty, lofty goal. But the way that I'm achieving that currently is by having one of each new set that comes out. So every time a new set comes out with a booster box, I put one away into my collection to make sure that like at least moving forward. So I have all the way back to Sword and Shield base set and one all the way through. And then last year I was able to grab a Unified Minds booster box. So ideally I'd be adding like one or two of the older booster boxes each year as well as the channel grows and hopefully we'll be able to... Uh, or you'll be able to see my collection grow as well because I'm in it with you. Like I'm just a normal guy, just like lots of you watching who I love Pokemon. I like, even when the sets aren't good, I just love it. I get excited about it. And, uh, I love collecting too. Like I, back in COVID when I got kind of back into the collecting, started collecting Funko Pops. And then I started opening Pokemon cards. If you've been watching the channel for any amount of time, I've been telling these stories. Like I pulled two Charizard celebration cards uh, out of two mini tins on the same day when I was traveling with my wife. And then out of a Costco mini tin box, I pulled the Sylveon VMAX. I had no idea it was even worth like over a hundred bucks. And I was like, Ooh, this is kind of cool. So there's just like these few things and then, and then it just keeps building the fire. And then I started the YouTube channel and then I started opening up some packs and then I opened up some cool cards. And now I started sending cards into PSA. Like it's just this cycle that continues to grow. Hey, before we carry on, TCG and games.com has actually given the Pokey office viewers an additional bonus with the promo code the pokey office to get five percent additional off of your next scarlet and violet 151 and or crown zenith purchase so see this graphic use the promo code the pokey office at tcg and games.com to get five percent bonus off your next pokemon purchase uh he's where i buy all my booster boxes from he's a great dude and he treats me awesome so go support check it out tcg and games.com so taking a step back, we've talked about goals, being specific, being measurable, being timely. Uh, we've talked about like using that knowledge as we have decisions that come before us. So we have this knowledge of our goal in the back of our mind, and now we can make the right decision to further our direction, to further our goals or to get closer to our goals. Then I shared a little bit about my own personal goals, my, uh, my YouTube channel goals, plus my 
uh, personal collection goals. And now I just want to talk to you about actually putting it out there. So really quickly, I think there's a lot of power, first of all, into writing your goals down because as soon as you actually like put it on paper, it makes it really real and then you're like actually striving for it. I have my goals written down uh, for the pokey office and they're right here beside me. You can't see them, but they're on a piece of paper. I look at it every single day that I'm in here to kind of like continue it continues to build that fire deep inside of you so that you continue to carry on with it because we all have days where it's like ah, I don't really care about this anymore or I don't have the money for that or like put any excuse in there ever and we all have days like that but when you see your goals this is what I'm working towards this is what I'm fighting for you continue to push forward for that the next thing putting it out there part of the reason I'm recording this video because I don't know if it's going to do well or not with the YouTube algorithm but part of the reason I'm putting this video out there is because there's just something to it now whatever you are watching right at this point you know my goals you know that you can kind of keep me accountable I put it out there to the universe I'm like telling the universe that this is what I want to have happen and I'm going to be fighting for it uh, it, whereas if you just internalize it, like no one else knows, no one can hold your feet to the fire. No one can keep you accountable. So I'm not saying you need to record a YouTube video about your goals or anything like that. That's just my decision, but tell your significant other or tell your friend or tell your, I don't know, your parents or tell your kids or like whoever you trust to, I mean, push you along, give you that extra little nudge on the days where you p maybe don't care. I think is a really, really powerful tool because I personally believe, I don't want to get too much into this, but the universe is abundant and you can go get what you want, but you got to fight for it. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to try and achieve one of these goals now by pulling that stinking paradox rift roaring moon special illustration rare. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to flip it around, open up some packs, but let me know what you think. Appreciate you watching. And make sure to tell me down below in uh, the comments what your Pokemon goals for 2024 are. All right, here we are. We got 10 packs of Paradox Rift. As per usual on the Poke Office, 10 packs. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. One of the last, I think the last video actually, I uh, pulled the Aerodactyl from Lost Origin, which was pretty epic because I finally broke the curse of the Lost Origin. Uh, alternate art Norman right off the bat okay okay not bad ultra rare trainer not one of the really popular ones but uh, pack stuck together still a nice hit to uh, start the video off but yeah let me know what you think um, I try and write my goals out like my goals specifically that I shared with you today are for like the time frame is by card party 2.0 uh, hopefully you all can join. I'll actually should put the link down below in the description for you. Uh, it would be awesome to meet lots of you and to hang out for a couple days. I didn't go to Card Party 1, uh, but apparently it was like the bee's knees of stuff. It seemed awesome. So I am really looking forward to going to that. Uh, put on by Deep Pocket Monster and lots of the big Pokemon YouTubers are there. Uh, I think it's going to be a blast. And in Orlando, so that should be fun in and of itself Chantel two full art ultra rare supporter cards right off the bat uh, not really the expensive ones but still pretty sweet dang okay okay um, but yeah so I usually like put to either a kind of 6 to 12 month uh, time frame on my goals and then I mean the thing about goals, you can always reassess whenever you feel like it. Like maybe things have changed. Maybe you have more or less money to spend on Pokemon. Or maybe you're, maybe you complete your 151 um, master set early. Like, and then you just need to reassess your goals. So there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. You can look at them all the time. That's what's important is to have them on, uh, like have them actually written down close by so you can look at them all the time and then if you achieve them awesome if you don't that just might be an opportunity to be like okay yeah i didn't get there this time um what do i need to do different 
and for instance, I didn't get, uh, I didn't quite achieve my goal of 7,500 subscribers by December 31st, 2023. Uh, I got really close, but I didn't quite get there. So it's like time to reassess. What do, what have I been doing really well? What have I not been doing that well? And what do I need to do different? So you're going to start to see, like, I'm still kind of assessing because I mean, to be fair, my last couple of videos have done pretty decent on YouTube. Um, but I got to do more of what works and less of what doesn't. So there's like, I'm trying to provide as, as valuable content as I can for you so that it's enjoyable and that you actually want to keep coming back to the pokey office and watching me. So it's one of those things that, yeah, assessing your goals is not a problem whatsoever and changing your goals what's is not a problem like that's just totally totally fine uh and i think you actually should do that so if you set your goal for six to twelve months out i mean don't wait six months to look at it again you should be looking at it every single day or every single week making sure that you're on the right track is this another i can't really tell no it's not just a regular ex cofagrigus is that how you say that one? Cofagrigus? I don't know. Anyways. So yeah, last uh, last shameless plug for me here. If you're not subscribed yet and you're enjoying the content, make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel. Bell notifications on. Hit the like button for me. It really does help the uh, YouTube algorithm get my stuff out to more people. I appreciate you for watching. If you do want to join the membership, you could do that. That also helps quite a bit. And uh, yeah, just, I wanna know your goals. So leave me a comment. I read all the comments, legit. It's like a part-time job, but it really, like it helps keep the fire burning on days. Like it's like, holy crap, there's a hundred comments or 200 comments of people actually sharing with me. Like that's pretty special. So I don't take that for granted one bit. No roaring moon this time. And no hit on the last pack. But seriously, two ultra rare uh, supporter cards right off the bat. It's pretty cool. Chantel and Norman. Not too bad. That's going to do it for me at the Pokey Office. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the content. Let me know. Give me feedback of any kind. Uh, and until my next one, peace.